Thank you. All right. Last promise. You cannot be quiet. Your word. Pay attention. Just so what I want to do for this last problem, guys, is I want to solve, remember when we're doing substitution, we need to get a variable by itself. We looked at this, this second equation, and this is not a good way to solve for x or y because I'm going to have to use a two-step. I'm going to have to be dividing by two, and you can do it, but a lot of times you're just making more work on yourself. You want to pick a variable that either has a positive one or negative one in front of it and solve for that variable. So I noticed that my x has a one in front, therefore I'm going to want to solve for that variable. So to do that, I'll just do that little side work over here. So I have x minus 5y equals 10. To quickly solve for x, all I have to do is add the 5y to the other side. Okay? Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is now, remember, I need to substitute in the value of x, which is 10 plus 5y. I'm going to substitute that in for the other equation. So when I do that, I get 2. I don't want to write times x, but times... Ten plus five y minus ten y equals twenty. Okay. Now, since I have a number, and remember, guys, when you're doing substitution, Justin, you're in this now. Okay. When you're doing substitution, you've got to make sure you put parentheses around your number that you substitute in. The reason why is because, ladies and gentlemen, when there's multiplication, remember when we have a number multiplied by parentheses, we have to use distributive property. So it's really important that when you guys showing me that you're doing substitution, that you put it around parentheses. So therefore, I'm going to get 20 plus 10y minus 10y equals 20. All right? Now, I'm going to do this kind of two different ways. Okay? I'm going to leave it like this. Um, and one way I'm going to do is you could also... Let's show you guys this way. Let me rewrite the problem. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen over here, if you guys notice, these two cancel out, right? You're left with 20 equals 20. Is that true or false? True. True, right? That's important to know. Also to know is, let me just manipulate this a little bit. Let me add the 10y over to this side. And then let me subtract the 20 on both sides. Therefore, what you guys get is 10y equals 10y. Divide by 10 on both sides. And I get y equals y. Okay? Now, what I did, guys, is I just kind of solved this two different ways. But I want you guys to look at this and try to think about this. Remember, we're trying to find the solution of the system, right? Where we have two lines intersect. Okay? Now remember, when we're doing this, we need to find an x value and we need to find a y value. So let's try to think about this y value. For one thing, do we have our y, do we, can we get a y by itself? No, we can't get y equals 3 or y equals 4, right? Whenever y equals a number, it's going to be equal 5 equals 5, 10 equals 10, right? y is always going to be true for any number, right? Say y equals 10. Is it going to make this inequality true? Right? What about y equals negative 5? Negative 5 equals negative 5. y equals 10. Y 10 equals 10. y equals 30. 30 equals 30. So this is always going to be true, right? So what that means is on the intersection, your y coordinates are always equal to, or your y coordinates are always equal to each other. Do you guys remember what type of solution we had? When we, when we had all of the coordinates were the same or they shared? Do you remember? No Not the no solution. Remember the no solution, they don't intersect at all. The infinite many solutions. So that's what exactly what this is. What this is is two lines actually right on top of each other where all their points are shared. Their y coordinates are always equal to each other. So this is what we call an infinite many solutions. <laughs> So, so it's infinite many solutions. You're not going to get a select. Okay. okay?